All right, folks, welcome back to the, what is segment number, whatever, it doesn't matter, about the Creation Science Hour. <laughs> Here it is, uh, May 31st of uh, 2005. Ken Hovind and Jonathan Sampson defending the idea that creation is true, the Bible is literally true, and opposing the idea that evolution has any scientific merit at all. And, Jared, you've been on a long time. To give you a few more minutes. Go ahead and make your point there. I want to, well, real quick, so, before he makes his point, I want to just uh, just take some, some of the time real quick and just... I did a quick search on living fossils. I have coelacanths, 340 million years old, ginkgo trees, 125 million years old, crocodiles, 140 million years old, horseshoe crabs, 200 million years old, lingula lamp shell, 450 million years old, tuatar lizard, 200 million years old, uh, neopelina mollusk, 500 million years old. Keep in mind, keep what you're going, saying going, going, going. These are living animals, or plants. Still today. But the last fossil that was found for them is in that era that was 220 million years ago. So yeah, you have two choices. Either you have to come up with Jared's idea that says, well, they were just alive in an in a, a isolated area and we didn't get any fossils of them, or the common sense idea that the whole geologic column is retarded, it doesn't exist, and somebody's trying to, it's like Eric just said walking out here, it's a fog that fits the landscape. Your evolution theory is, is, is meaningless. Uh, you're able to adapt any finding to your theory. It's not science. It's not falsifiable, Jared. Think about it. Here's a question for you. Uh, okay. Why would human fossils be all over Geological well, I think there's some common sense reasons for that. First of all, they may be. Okay, who's doing the counting? Number two, I would say, you know, if an evolutionist is doing the counting, he's going to find some reason to put it in some other layer. Okay, or some reason to justify it. Uh, secondly, um, humans are smarter than animals, and they would tend to avoid drowning until the last minute, and they would tend to end up on top instead of on the bottom in a flood situation. So they're less likely to be found fossilized. A human is a pretty dynamic subject, yeah. I mean, it's, you can't just throw a human in a well and expect to get the same result. I'm, I'm having a hard time imagining this scenario. And first of all, I want to apologize for you that, that it enrages me when I hear people telling things that errors are going wrong. Well, that's why we have this whole program, because it enrages me that the whole evolution theory is being taught, which is later and wrong. That. So, what you're referring to, Ryan, is a pause. Okay. Uh -huh. I've actually heard about this before. They're not trilobites. What's the difference? They're not the same animal. You you can come study ours. They're just about identical. They have three sections to their body. Uh, I've got all kinds so of trilobites. They have three sections to their body. I have all kinds of trilobite fossils in our museum, as well as these uh, Baltic isopods, as well as what's the big sea roach we have from the Caribbean? Okay, so you're saying that they're isopods and not trilobites? I cannot remember what that uh, scientific name was for that thing. I don't remember. Huge daddy. Huge big daddy. Name, about nine inches long. The uh, biggest daddy is. Oh, hold on. You're, you're admitting the isopods are not trilobites. I would say the isopods and trilobites would be the exact same family of creature. Are you admitting the isopods are not trilobites? I don't know what the definition of trilobite is. I guess I'd have to hear a clear definition. If by no, your definition... I'm not a biologist, so I can't give you, like, a unique character combination that defines it, but okay. uh, I, I would say know that they say that they are not the same animal. Well, that's what somebody may be saying that, but I would say if you put, you know, two of these side by side, put a trilobite and an isopod next to each other, say, are these the same animal? I mean, 99% of the world's population is going to walk by and say, yeah, it's the same thing. Just like everybody would say the living coelacanth and the fossil coelacanth is identical. You know, I, I'm sure that you could find sufficiently ignorant people that if you put a bat and a bird next to each other, they would say they were the same kind of animal, too. So what? But you may have a point there. But I think if you look at the isopods that we have, and thousands of these are stuck into the screens at the conical oil treatment plant in uh, uh, near Barrow, Alaska. Uh, that's where we got a jar of them sent from. And they were still alive when they arrived. But I don't know how to keep one alive. I mean, what do you feed them, you know? So. The thing is, it's not, it's not just trilobites. I think trilobites, I could have picked like any of the other Cambrian animals. There's a ton of Cambrian animals that are really weird. They don't exist anymore. They don't exist anywhere else in the geological column. You can't possibly know such a thing. How can you claim to have such a long town? You, I I mean, just, well, hold on a second. You would have to practically be God to say this thing does not exist anywhere. No, it <laughs> yeah. has not ever been found. Okay, but that's not the same as saying it does not exist anywhere. In You're science. saying we have never seen this here lately. Look, and look, again, science, that's not the way it works. So you guys are using some very equivocal language Well, I can here. say how it works. Here's the way it works. If your findings don't support the evolution theory, you lose your grant money, and it doesn't get published. That's how it works. You know, you have a point, Ken. You have a point. But that has nothing to do with the theory of evolution. It has everything to do with what gets published and what doesn't, and then that becomes the evidence. If some rogue scientist found something so criminalizing, like trilobites or these other Cambrian animals, you know, in, in rock layers that are just like a few meters below your backyard. Some 
500 we turn the theory of evolution on its It wouldn't well, phase the theory. It's a fog that fits we've got, we've got 500 million year old mollus shells. We have 450 million year old lamp shells. I mean, what? there's no way a trilobite fossil would change any of this. It may change and make them admit that they have to be a bit more flexible and not as strict. So all they would do is they would say exactly what Jared just said earlier. They would say, well, there was an isolated section of the world that this trilobite didn't need to evolve in. They wouldn't phase their theory. If they go to Africa and catch a living dinosaur and bring it back and put it in a Brooklyn Zoo, Jared's going to walk by and say, wow, well, that one just happened to survive for 70 million years. He won't abandon his theory because he likes this theory. It gives him freedom from God. No, well, no, Jared, don't you... There are plenty of people that believe in God. Well, in Jared, from your own perspective, if we found a trilobite, wouldn't you admit from your understanding that the evidence supporting evolution is far greater than, you know, the evidence against it finding a trilobite in modern times? Re rephrase that. Well, country. if I walked up and I said, look, here's a trilobite, okay, in my hand. I would be so shocked. Well, well one second, one second. Well, hold on a second. Let me, let me finish here. You would wouldn't you admit that evolution is much too strongly supported by science to be destroyed over some little, you know, you know, creature. That one thing probably would destroy the theory, but it would seriously challenge it. That's the kind of thing that she would you know, that she would accumulate to challenge the theory in total. Okay, but the changes that, that would happen to the evolutionary theory are not the kind of changes I think you're admitting right now. It may change in the factor in the respect that it would admit that trilobites could exist now today and then your very you know, dogmatic position that they do not exist today would have to change, yes. But you I would still be a three and a half billion year old you know, evolutionist here. I think mostly what it would, what it would change uh, or challenge is the genetic mutation. Uh, that, would, that would not fit the model if I understand it correctly. And it would be a serious challenge. Now, let me ask one question. Um, if you found a human fossil in uh, a rock layer it's like the Cambrian era, do you not agree that that would destroy the theory of evolution? No. Tell me why. Why are you familiar with the Guadalupe skeleton? No. Found in solid marble, human skeleton, uh, most of the lower torso missing the head and I think a couple of the collarbone, collarbone and a couple of ribs of a woman found in uh, Guadalupe that was a complete fossil, a human fossil in rock supposed to be, I think, close to Cambrian, uh, by, by their definition, they would just it baffled them. How can this be here? See, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to go Google this. Sure. And I'm going to find a bunch of people who are talking about it, saying that there is no credibility to it. Well, do the KBS stuff. There's tons of credibility to that one. You know, they securely. Well, of course, they're you're, you're basically. You're, well, you're hold basically on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Come on, we're on here too. They securely dated this KBS stuff. And uh, 212 was, million years old. Nature is, magazine, 1970. Yeah. Modern humans didn't show up until what, 50,000 years ago? And so, years ago, roughly. Well, you're talking about. I'm I'm talking about a something totally different. I Modern humans here. wearing shoes, etc. Or is Homo um, sapiens, Homo sapiens, Canadian? Yeah. yeah well, wise, wise man. So the KBS stuff, they dated it to over 200 million years old, and yet they found a perfectly modern skeleton underneath there, or some you know, Rich, modern Richard Leakey, spelled KNMER 1470, under the KBS. And what do they do? They change to accommodate this new evidence. They how said, do they oh. How do they explain it? They said, well, this you know previously acclaimed secure date must not have been accurate. And they did it with, what, like nine different types of dating methods? Of yes. They used ten samples of KBS stuff. After it, it had already been dated 20 times, and everybody agreed it's 212 million years old. Okay, can you give me the name of this? Because like, what you're saying here, this, this is a falsification of evolution. 